Hello, uh, welcome to my talk, which is Engineering the Archive, Cataloguing the Halton Mill Collection. I'm just going to share my uh, slides with you. Uh, my name is James Toe. I'm a freelance archivist, which means I work to catalogue, keep safe, and make accessible, useful, and interesting old documents. Um, I'm going to talk to you today about my work to catalogue and repackage a collection of papers and photographs relating to Loomside Engineering and how a group of volunteers from Halton Mill are helping with that process. Uh, I'm going to talk for about half an hour and tell you about the processes of cataloguing and repackaging and what the end results will be. We'll also look at what the collection consists of and consider why it's important and why we've undertaken this work. Uh, I do have a few slides to show you along the way, so we'll drop in and out of those as we go. Um, I'm recording this today just outside of Edinburgh, but until quite recently, I was based in Lancaster. And I came to be involved in the Holton Mill project by Lancashire Archives, who were contacted back in spring 2019 about cataloguing and repackaging a collection of documents and photographs concerning Lucy Engineering. Uh, soon afterwards, I went to Holton Mill to meet Kate and Chris, conduct an initial survey of the papers, and to generally get an idea of their extent, content, and the work involved in cataloguing them. Uh, I should say that at this point, uh, I really didn't know what to expect. And here are a few pictures which show the collection as they found it. So just bear with me while I share my slides again. Okay. Oh dear, I'm having a bit of a problem with that. There we go. So, uh, it probably appears more chaotic in these pictures than it actually was. Um, the collection had obviously been cared for and with a few exceptions such as the rolled technical drawings which you can see in the top right here. The papers were physically in good condition and everything had been kept safe and everything had been kept dry and protected from the elements. Um, they did however need to be sorted catalogued and repackaged. Uh, the collection was and, and is not huge. Uh, repackaged, it now consists of about six boxes of material. To put that in some sort of context, some business collections can consist of hundreds of boxes of documents requiring months of work to catalogue. Uh, so while it would certainly need some work to get it all in good order, it was apparent that cataloguing and repackaging the collection was an achievable goal. That is, it was something that would require a few days work rather than a few months work. Um, it was also apparent that this wasn't the full business archives as Loonside, of Loonside engineering as such, uh, but rather a bit of a hodgepodge of interesting material from different sources. And through Kate and Chris, I learned that the collection of records and papers were collated in 2018 around the 70th anniversary celebrations of Loonside Engineering. And that it was made up of, of donations from various local individuals with an interest in the company, along with material found left on site at Halton Mill. Okay, we'll uh, drop out of my slides again. Uh, so my survey found a relatively small fragmentary collection of papers. However, having read up on the history of Loonside Engineering prior to conducting the survey, um, it was a collection I found to be tremendously exciting um, and I consider it to be of clear importance 
and of historical value. And this is really because of two factors, um, the collection's uniqueness and the collection's context, which I'll talk about more in just a, just a few moments. The archive survey led to an agreement that I would catalogue the collection when funding became available to do so, with volunteers undertaking much of the detailed listing and repackaging work. When complete, the collection would then be deposited at Lancashire Archives, where it would be kept safely and made available to researchers. In the event, I catalogued the collection in March and April this year, and the volunteers began their work following an online training session in September. And so why is this collection important? I'm not going to go into detail about the history of Loonside Engineering here, as I'm sure it's been covered brilliantly elsewhere today. Um, but it is this history, and particularly the links to World War II, the links to the immigrant Polish community, the formidable characters of Colonel Teodor Winiski, and later his daughter, Eva Hermosinski, and there and Lex clear and lasting links with the local community which imbue the collection with such significance. Because of this, Loomside Engineering represents more than just another local business and as such any surviving and available business records should be preserved and made accessible. The collection is also unique in that there are no other papers relating to Loomside Engineering publicly accessible. That is, there are no relevant collections held at Lancashire Archives or, to the best of my knowledge and to the best of my research, at any other publicly accessible archives. Um, so, particularly because of these links to the local area and to the local community, I can see there being much research interest in the collection when it is deposited. This might be from students and scholars, local historians, family historians or former employees, or really anybody who has a curiosity or interest in the collection. The great advantage of it being deposited with Lancashire Archives is that it will be kept safe and made available to all. And for those of you not familiar with the work of the local archives or local record office, I should explain a bit about what they are and what they do. Um, Lancashire Archives is the archive for Lancashire, so it collects, preserves and makes accessible collections of historical documents relating to the county of Lancashire and to its people. The very oldest material they have is parchments dating from the 12th century and the newest material they have is, is digital material from the 21st century and a format can be anything, it can be parchment, paper, digital, you name it. And um, these come, these records, these documents come from many different sources and include the administrative records of the county, such as county council and quarter session records. And they also include ecclesiastical records, records of private collectors and landed families. And importantly, for our context today, uh, local business records. The records are kept in nine miles of secure controlled storage, say from environmental damage, from damp, light, or exposure to fluctuating or extremes of temperature and humidity. And the records are made available to researchers free of charge through Lancashire Archives study room in Preston. Uh, under normal circumstances, you would not need an appointment to visit. But uh, with COVID and social distancing, a booking system is currently in place. At least that is the case at the time of recording. Um, if this talk does pique anybody's interest to visit Lancashire Archives or any other archive for that matter, I would um, definitely recommend having a look at their website before doing so in these, uh, in these changing times. So we'll come back from that diversion to return to my work on cataloguing the Loonside Engineering Collection. And it's worth asking the question, why, why catalog? Why, why do this? I think it's probably worth explaining what an archival catalog is 
and why we produce them to answer that question. Uh, an archi archival catalogue is essentially a structured, organised or categorised list of a collection's content, describing the individual items in a collection, what they are, their form and the date they cover, and assigning each a reference number by which it can be identified. Uh, it also includes a written introduction to the collection, and in this case, that's a brief company history and a note explaining the acquisition and custodial history of the papers, that is the, the life of the collection as, as an object, who it's belonged to, where it's been kept, that sort of thing. It's important to catalogue archival collections to make them accessible. And cataloguing is done to an agreed format following an archival standard for recording information, something called ISAD-G. This helps to ensure that all the important details are recorded and that it will be consistent with the existing catalogues at Lancashire Archives and in theory at least, although not really in practice, archival catalogues everywhere. Um, it gives an order to the records which makes them more readily comprehensible to researchers and allows us to keep a proper track of, of what there is in the collection. Uh, further to that, it provides context and detail which would otherwise be absent. Uh, the catalogue can be easily shared, publicising the collection and allowing researchers to know exactly what it contains uh, before they head into the boxes. Um, the more detail the catalogue has, the more useful it is for, for all of these functions, for all of these things. Uh, the catalogue I've produced will eventually be available online via LANCAT, that's L-A-N-C-A-T, uh, that is Lancashire Archives online catalogue, uh, which you can find online by the Lancashire Archives website or by just putting LANCAT into Google. And the paper, la excuse me, a paper catalogue, along of course with the collection itself, will be available to consult at Lancashire Archives in Preston. The other side of the coin to cataloguing and accessibility is preservation. And the idea here is to ensure the longevity of the collection. Uh, the idea is that the documents, photographs and digital images will be in as good condition in 50, 100, 200 years time as they are right now. And there are a number of things an archive like Lancashire Archives will do to help ensure this. That includes keeping the documents securely, storing them in a stable environment, encouraging good document handling practices amongst staff and researchers, and packaging the documents in appropriate materials, which is pertinent to the work I and the volunteers have been doing. Uh, this means using inert acid-free packaging, things like acid-free card files, which look like this, Let's just go in the middle there where they're kept safe. Acid-free paper files. And for photographs, clear polyester sleeves like this and photograph slots in the middle. And you can keep everything together with archival tying tape. And um, brass paper clips. And we use brass paper clips because they, they don't rust. And then everything's put together in, uh, in acid-free boxes to keep it safe. Uh, the process also means removing any existing packaging such as acidic cardboard files. And particularly nasty are things like rotted rubber bands, old sellotape, and rusty paper clips or wool dot clips, which can eat through the paper and do, do quite a bit of damage. Um, I've already started this repackaging process and I'll talk in a moment about the Halton Mill volunteers who are taking it further. And you can see the results of the repackaging work in these images. So I'm just going to share my slides with you again. There we go. Uh, so this is the whole collection before and after repackaging.
files and folders inside the boxes. And this is a collection of receipts and invoices which needed uh, special attention. Uh, they needed to be carefully unraveled, sorted into order, and then flattened before repackaging in an acid-free folder. And here we have the torn and damaged technical drawings, which I rolled and wrapped to prevent further damage. Uh, as yet, no repair work has been undertaken on them, but it's something that might be considered in the future. That type of work would need to be done by a professional archives conservator. It's uh, a different uh, skill set and, and uh, set of expertise than, than I have as, a, uh, as an archivist. A conservator would need to do that sort of repair. Okay, we'll come out of the slides again. Uh, I'm going to end my talk by looking at the contents of the collection, but before we get to that, I'd like to explain a bit more about how the Halton Mill volunteers are contributing to the catalogue and to the repackaging work. Uh, volunteers are helping with detailed listing and repackaging of the collection, along with some important transcription and translation work. Ultimately, I'll collate and edit the results of their work before passing it along to Lancashire Archives when the collection is deposited there. Um, volunteers can bring a lot to a project like this and they can bring a number of things which I as an archivist can't necessarily. Uh, this might be a commitment of time to complete detailed listing of individual letters in a file of correspondence or individual entries in a bound register of employees. It might be a detailed knowledge of the history of Loonside Engineering and the people who worked there, the work they did and the products they produced. Or it might be language skills, translating the Polish language documents in the collection. There are, in fact, several tasks which the volunteers are working on. Uh, repackaging that is putting individual letters, press cuttings and photographs into, to, um, excuse me, into individual acid-free paper folders or clear polyester sleeves and making sure that they are marked up with the appropriate reference number. And we also use a 2B pencil for marking up documents with a reference number, um, which is much more forgiving of any mistakes or errors than it would be if we used a, a pen or even a harder pencil. Um, detailed archival listing. This is adding more detail to describe individual pieces within a file or bundle in the collection, where I previously only provided a covering description for the whole. Uh, it relates specifically to a file of correspondence concerning Forge Bank Mill housing development and a set of around 60 newspaper clippings from the 1970s and 1980s, and also overall technical drawings. Identifying and listing photographs. There are a large number of photographs in the collection, both physical and digital. And volunteers are working on these to describe them in detail and identify the subjects they show. Uh, this is a really important contribution as at the moment, we have little information about the individual photos. Uh, as somebody who's, who's an outsider, um, I'm not going to recognize the people, places and machinery in these photographs. But a volunteer who worked at Linside Engineering with a, a knowledge of the company and its history, they, they might, they might recognize these things. Um, excuse me, indexing and transcribing staff lists. Uh, there is a brief staff list from the 1960s, along with very detailed and extensive staff registers, that is registers of people who worked at Linside Engineering from the 1980s and the volunteers are transcribing them to make them searchable. Translating Polish language materials, we're, we're also hoping to find a volunteer to, to, to transcribe and translate the Polish language material within the collection. It's not a huge amount of such material, uh, but it would be great to have a translation of what there is. Uh, it includes especially a speech by Colonel Dinerski that, uh, that comes to mind and also his correspondence with the Union of Polish War 
disabled ex servicemen it would be great to know what those letters say um, originally the plan was to have an introductory session with the volunteers at Alton Mill at the end of March um, but with COVID-19 um, that uh, unfortunately proved impossible so instead I delivered training to the volunteers via Zoom in September and October and they have since been working on the tasks at uh, the time of recording, uh, I'm looking forward to, to seeing the end results of their, of their labours. Um, right, so we'll, um, we'll move on now to have a look at the catalogue and what's inside the collection. Um, before we do, I think it's worth my emphasising again that the collection is, is fragmentary and we don't have the full business records of Lunaside Engineering. Uh, these would include things like large series of board minute books and ledgers of accounts, for example, which, which are entirely missing. Uh, however, what remains is still important and useful and will be invaluable to historians and researchers in the future. Uh, so let's share my slides again. Okay, this is the contents page and a couple of pages from the paper catalog just to give you a sense of what that looks like. And these are those contents close up. Uh, I'll take you briefly through the contents of the different sections of the catalog which are laid out here. And as we do, um, I apologize for the, the not always great quality of the photographs which you're about to see. These were taken mostly as quick snaps uh, that I did just after cataloguing the collection, uh, but hopefully they'll be clear enough to give you an idea at least. So correspondence, that is correspondence and letters from the 1950s to the 1990s, including material from and to Colonel Bineski and Eva Hermosinski. And shown here, we have a letter concerning the development of a new drilling rig from the 1980s, Correspondence with Orton Parish Council concerning best capped village competition, um, also from the 1980s, and Eva Hermosinski's correspondence with 345 City of Lancaster Squad Squadron Air Training Corps, and Eva's correspondence with Elaine Kellett Bowman MP. And the common thread really through all of these is, is the um, community involvement of, of LEC, of Loonside Engineering as a, as a company. Um, orders, there are order books from the 1950s, sorry, an order book from the 1950s, along with sundry other records and accounts. Accounts are similarly fragmentary, mostly from the 1950s and 1960s, including the flattened receipts and invoices we saw a moment ago. Staff records, um, shown here are the, is one of the, um, the staff registers from the 1980s, which we mentioned a moment ago. Uh, there are two of these, so you can see the, uh, the volunteers have really got their work cut out in, uh, in transcribing those. Publications and promotional material. Uh, that is promotional material from Loonside Engineering. Most of it dates from the 1980s and 1990s. Pictured on the right is an advert and published article, the Loonside Engineering Group Combined Force in today's high-tech subcontract manufacturing environment. That's from the 1990s. And to the left of it is a really interesting article from 1979. Uh, its title is somewhat of its time, Positive Polls. Um, about Loonside Engineering, but particularly about Colonel Bineski. And it's especially interesting, um, really, because it was, it was written very soon before uh, the Colonel's death in 1978, in late 1978. So really a, a last record of his, um, of his reminiscences and, and thoughts on the company. Uh, Press releases and press cuttings. 
mostly newspaper cuttings from the 1970s to the 1990s, including a large file of 60 plus cuttings, which a volunteer is working on listing individually. Uh, there are also plant lists. These are lists of plant machinery from the 1980s. There are site plans from the 1980s and 1990s. There are the technical drawings, which we've talked about. Uh, which volunteers are, are working on and they date from the 50s and 60s and there is a very large collection of photographs a small selection of which is shown here uh, there's a huge number of photographs actually which volunteers are hard at work on repackaging and identifying and there's a mixture of subjects uh, showing staff at work and play and others showing the site and machinery and others still showing the products manufactured by Loomside Engineering. Uh, more than 90 physical photographs and more than 300 digital images. Um, and it's a, a really nice collection, especially the sort of social and community side of things again are, are really shown up through these, through these photos. Uh, rounding out the collection, there are works notices and company stationery and there's a final section for other records which are those things that don't quite belong in the other sections we've talked about uh, it includes polish language engineering manuals from the 1940s health and safety notices a pocket address book for clients presumably belonging to colonel Beniski and also uh, a leather document case containing lists of christmas gifts for staff and clients in the early 1970s which is quite a, a nice thing and that's pictured here as well so um i think that's that's about it really uh draw things to a close there close my slides down uh, i hope that's been of interest and given you something of an insight into how and why we catalogue and preserve archives and specifically the Loonside Engineering Collection. Um, finally, I'd like to take the opportunity to thank the volunteers for all the work they're putting in and to encourage any of you with an interest to take a look at the collection when it's deposited at Lancashire Archives when, um, when current circumstances <laughs> allow you to do that. That's terrific. Thank you for your attention. And I'll stop the recording there. Thank you.